Welcome to BDO World Hockey. In this edition, the world's best female player, Luciana Amar. Elation for Argentina's young Pumas at the Rabo Junior World Cup in Rotterdam. The battle for business between two South African training camps and Olympic gold medalist Silky Muller at home in Germany and on top of the world. But first to the Netherlands, where Argentina has won the Rabo Men's Junior World Cup. Silver medalists four years ago, the young Pumas went through the tournament undefeated. They beat Australia to take the title with a goal after the final whistle. We'll have extended highlights of that game shortly. Argentina's Lucas Vila was named player of the tournament. And Spain showed great form to finish with the bronze medal, beating India on penalty strokes on the final day. And the Netherlands beat Germany, also on penalty strokes, in the battle for fifth and sixth. An overcast Virginia Beach in the United States was the venue for the Rabobank Women's Champions Challenge. The final pitched New Zealand against South Africa, and it was the Black Sticks who prevailed with two goals in the second half. <laughs> Meredith Orr getting the first, the second scored by Ninawa Roberts Lang. The win puts New Zealand back into the Champions Trophy tournament from next year. No, we'll go back next year and, and use this great preparation for World Cup, so um, our young side will um, benefit from it greatly. Japan took the bronze medal with a 2-1 win over England, while the USA beat Spain 5-3 in the battle for fifth and sixth. We'll have extended highlights of the tournament in the next edition of BDO World Hockey. Games of the 30th Olympiad in 2012 are awarded to the city of London. And this is a glimpse of the proposed hockey facilities at the 2012 Olympic Games in London. The venue will be at the centre of the Olympic Park complex, within walking distance of the main stadium and of the Olympic Village. The main hockey arena will have a capacity of 15,000, while the second pitch will have seating for 5,000 spectators. After the Games, the hockey centre will be reconfigured to provide a new 5,000 seat permanent stadium. Defending champions, the Netherlands, will host the Women's Champions Trophy Tournament in 2006. The Netherlands has been awarded the Rabobank Women's Champions Trophy to be held in Amstelveen in July next year. The Dutch team won the 2004 BDO Champions Trophy event in Rosario, Argentina last November and will defend their title in Canberra in Australia this November before hosting next year's event. Spain will host the men's event in 2006. They won the 2004 Samsung Champions Trophy event in Lahore and will defend their title in Chennai in India in December this year before hosting the Sahara Champions Trophy tournament in Tarapa in Spain in July 2006. And Italy has been awarded the Samsung Women's Hockey World Cup qualifier which will be held in Rome in April and May 2006. A full list of the World Hockey events can be found on our website at worldhockey.org. The Olympic rings mean a lot to elite level athletes. It's every hockey player's dream to win an Olympic gold medal. And Germany's Silke Muller knows the experience. The sometimes temperamental 26-year-old is a key member of Germany's midfield and is never far away from hockey. Guten Morgen. Silky works for LSB, the National Sports Federation in Frankfurt. It's a job that allows her to take the time she needs for training and for international tournaments. This is the perfect spot for me. I can mix my job duties with training sessions and everything is here. I can organize seminars in the morning and have a weight session during my lunch break. And LSB is very cooperative with my time schedule. When we have to play, either with my club or the national team, they are happy for me to leave my desk. Among her many talents, Silky Muller is multilingual. She's fluent in German, English, French and Spanish. The Spanish comes from her mother, who was originally from Madrid. Hola. Spend a day with her and you sense that Silky Muller is comfortable just about anywhere, especially at home with family and friends and remembering that golden night in Athens last year. But she's also training for the future, the next Champions Trophy in Canberra, the World Cup in Spain next year, 
and Beijing in 2008. Her club trainer and former national team coach Bertie Routh acknowledges her talent and her occasional temper. Her mum is from Spain, so she naturally has that outgoing, ever energetic temperament. She plays with a lot of heart, sometimes refusing to include our tactics in her game. In one game I really appreciate that flair, but in another she can endanger the team's success. If you let her go, she can win games on her own, but sometimes no one can stop her. Not me, not the umpires, not even her teammates. But if you can channel it, Silky can be a match winner. In English, we'd call Silky Muller a pocket dynamo. In addition to being extremely talented, she's justifiably proud of her achievements. She's also exceptionally proud of her country and of her hometown of Frankfurt. I was born here 26 years ago and I've never been anywhere else. And she can be the life of the party with a reputation for organising everything from the music on the team bus to the victory party after a game. Silky is a real entertainer. She's so much in the focus. For example, when we celebrate our championships, a stand-up comedian, she could easily entertain a bigger audience. Maybe one day there is even a chance for her to be a professional entertainer and use her talents that way. She probably only needs a chance in the future. But for now, Silky Moore will focus on entertaining spectators at hockey matches. There's more to be done, there are more medals to win, and perhaps acting classes. <laughs> Coming up on BDO World Hockey, top level training camps in South Africa. That's ahead, but first, back to Rotterdam for the highlights of a thrilling final to the Rabo Men's Junior World Cup between Argentina and Australia. Your commentators are Anupam Gulati and Nick Irvin. Good ball in, good goalkeeping too, it's not clear. Oh, dexterous stuff has gone in, but off the foot, one count. One count hasn't been given. Australia have taken it quickly in the breaking. Two and a half minutes left in the first half of this final. And either side gain an advantage to take into the dressing room with them at half time. Penalty corner. Good time to score. Not there's ever been a bad one, but significantly just before the break, it all seems to uh, give teams a real lift. Who's going to penalty stroke? Cleared off the line using the body. It's a real chance now for Australia with a little more than, no, a little less rather than 90 seconds left on the clock. He's a big, strong ball of a player, as you can see there from his physique. And he's up against Juan Espinosa in the Argentine goal. Espinosa's goal. Espinosa, no chance with that one. Powerfully low. Australia takes the lead in the final. Came from the penalty spot. Good opportunity for uh, Argentina now to try and convert this into a penalty corner. Oh, that's too weak. Yes, you, we've seen their problems in uh, scoring goals throughout the tournament, and that's been shown up again here today. They look quite impressive in defence and also in the midfield. They could shine here. That will be a penalty stroke. Yes, indeed. Umpire Blush points to the spot for the second time. The stick tackle going in right in front of goal. And as soon as I heard that clatter, Nupi, I knew we were going to be looking at another penalty. Oh, yes. I'm glad the Argentine skipper is not taking it. He's missed three penalty strokes in this tournament. <laughs> well, the... Uh, Short straw has fallen to Lucas Villa, number 12. Just waiting for Amajit Singh to make his way up. So it's going to be Villa against Ben Crease. The same end. Well, Australia took the lead just before the interval. Now Argentina to square it. Wow. Just after the interval, and he does. He sends Crease the wrong way. And uh, Lucas Villa ties it up again at one goal each. And, uh, 
Well, it's no more than their efforts deserve. Ball not played with a lot of tempo by Australia at the moment. Argentina just stepping it up, able to pick the ball off. This is promising. Oh, wonderful ball, real chance. Penalty corner. But a real chance there in front of goal. Carl Brown complaining. But uh, we're into the last minute and Argentina have a penalty corner. And surely a nuclear goal here would be as good as the golden goal. Oh, yes. You just got 34 seconds on the clock. And uh, I would imagine this is Argentina's big moment. The golden moment. Yes, Will the they hold their nerves the is the is question. still ticking away. The umpires but haven't made any attempt to stop the clock here. Yeah, but we've seen some brilliant keeping by Ben Crees, haven't we? We certainly have. And he may need to be at his brilliant best again here. Well, the lead it from him now at this stage. We're into the last five seconds. This will be the last action. Argentina haven't pushed players forward, which surprised me a little bit. They might do in a minute because the hooter the hooter sounds. And uh, now we see the Argentine forwards going to the edge of the circle to put more pressure on. Amazing how long this corner has taken to complete. This will be the last action of the 70 minutes, and it could be the last action of the game if Argentina can find the goal here. There goes the shot. Oh, it's gone in. It's all over. It is the golden goal. It goes with the last strike of the game. And look at the contrast here. That is Argentina, as if you needed me to tell you. And somewhere underneath there is the goal scorer. And Australia are down. They cannot believe it. They've given their all. So the biggest uh, win ever for Argentina at the global level. World champions. They've done one better. They were silver medalists at Hobart four years ago. And here at Rotterdam, they have written history for themselves. They become another country to inscribe their names on uh, the trophy for the Junior World Cup. And uh, the party's about to start. So the dancing and the celebrations for Argentina begin. And uh, a time on the of the trophy. And it's uh, Lucas Rossi. Lucas Rossi has the cup and it belongs to the men that now surround him. The men from Congratulations Argentina. Congratulations for Argentina. It must hurt for Australia to look on at these scenes. It could so easily have been theirs. But uh, let this moment then belong to the Argentine outfit. Worthy winners of this, the Rabo Junior Hockey World Cup. A terrific result by Argentina, undefeated throughout the tournament and worthy winners. Spain took the bronze medal after beating India on penalty strokes. And the Netherlands also went beyond extra time before taking fifth place against their German neighbours. The Netherlands retained top spot in the Sahara World Hockey Women's Rankings after their win in the Champions Trophy Tournament in Rosario last November. Argentina holds second spot and are within striking distance of the Dutch in 2005. 
Australia hold the third ranking, while China are fourth thanks to their semi-final appearance at the Athens Olympics. Germany, the Olympic champions, are in fifth place in the rankings, but within striking distance of third. And New Zealand's win at Virginia Beach keeps the Black Sticks in sixth place. Korea currently hold position seven, ahead of England in eighth place. Japan edge up one place to ninth, and Spain slip down one rank to tenth. There's no change in the order of the men's rankings. Germany remain on top, with Australia in second place, and the Netherlands third. But any of the three top teams can take top spot later this year, when all the teams meet in Chennai. Fourth place is held by Pakistan, with a clear lead over fifth-placed India, although a win at home in Chennai would be worth another 300 points to the Asian champions. Spain are in sixth place as a result of their win in Lahore last year. Korea are seventh in the world after their silver medal in the Champions Challenge event in April, while Argentina, who won that challenge, have moved into position eight. New Zealand hold on to ninth place, and England round out the men's top ten. This is Pochefstroom in South Africa, 300 kilometres west of Johannesburg. A small town with a student flavour, it's rapidly building a reputation as the perfect training venue for international sporting teams. The Pochefstroom campus of Northwest University offers visiting teams a good climate, high altitude, and a wide range of facilities, including synthetic pitches, campus accommodation, and a relaxed environment. I think number one, the reason is the altitude. They like training at, at the altitude. The climate is very good for them in the summer months. And then uh, it's a relatively safe uh, environment. And I think that plays a huge role in the overseas uh, people coming here. They can also be very focused in what they do. There's no distractions like uh, you, you know discos and nightclubs which uh, most of the international teams would prefer not to have uh, when they're in a training camp. And it's not only hockey teams that find Pochefstrom attractive. The campus is also used by a range of athletes from other sports including netball, track and field and rugby teams such as the Johannesburg Cats. I think a lot of teams come here because it's a, a nice training venue. I mean, all the facilities are really great. Um, the gym is really nice to come close by. Our field, we stay right by the field. Um, we can just walk to the field. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, mainly I think it's because it's such a small town and, and there's a lot of, there's a nice like um, sporting culture and a nice vibe for athletes to come and train here. And for many European teams, South Africa also offers a financial benefit. Oh, it's great for us. Um, it's cheap, of course. The British pound is very strong. We're on a very similar latitude, so our, there's hardly any time difference, so we can come and get straight into the, uh, the play. Different continents, different hemispheres mean the weather's perfect for us, so we know we can be out on a pitch. We figure if we're here for 10 days or more, it's cheaper to be here than it is to do a camp at home as well. So, And South Africa is a strong hockey nation, so it's got everything for us. Jason Lee took his team not to Pochefstrom, but to Pretoria's high performance centre. Another state-of-the-art facility located 50 kilometres north of Johannesburg and strong competition for Pochefstrom. We've actually been appointed as the centre of specialisation for hockey in South Africa. Um, that means that we're responsible for the preparation, the scientific preparation, accommodation, training venue for South African hockey, right from uh, under 16 level through to the two, the two national sides, men's and women's. And as such, they've obviously spread the word as well too and uh, we're now becoming very popular with the teams as well. Pretoria's high performance centre also boasts impressive facilities and has been successful in attracting international teams from a variety of sports. And both cities continue to trade well on the exchange rate and on South Africa's climate. The, the prices they charge to, to use the facilities are very, very good worldwide I mean, in, in comparison to other uh, training camps national camps these are uh, you know one of the best going at the moment and while Pretoria claims the center of excellence for the national junior teams Pochefstrom is building a strong local junior competition the Poch boys team uh, they have eight teams at school and uh, I believe that that we will become the uh, factory of top class black hockey men's players in this country. Those are the people of the future and, uh, and we 
are really finding the benefit of this astroturf and obviously the second astroturf to cater for the needs of our people. And while these two venues may market to the same customers, they're different enough from each other to survive and prosper together, which is good news for South African hockey. South Africa is a, is a destination of choice. I think, too, that there's, a, there's enough uh, for both of us to uh, operate effectively in this country. She is, quite simply, the world's best female hockey player. That is amazing. Argentina's Luciana Amar. 27 years old, 169 international matches, 73 goals, a World Cup winner in 2002, and the medalist at both the Sydney and Athens Olympic Games, and twice named the World Hockey International Female Player of the Year. She's played with clubs in Germany and Spain and with her local teams, the Jockey Club of Rosario and Kilmeds. Hockey was her chosen sport as a young child in Rosario, when doctors there suggested a range of sports to help correct problems with her posture. I practiced dancing, swimming and skating, which were the three sports that doctors had advised me to do, and I got tired and I did not want to practice these sports anymore because they made me practice them. I played tennis and hockey at the same time, and I had to decide between them because the tournaments and the games overlapped. I decided to play hockey, I guess, because of a matter of friendship, because I already had a group of friends, and I enjoyed being with my friends, with my sister, and I chose to continue playing hockey. It wasn't long before her talent was obvious, and Luciana Amar was selected to play in the national junior team at 17. She admits she was nervous when she made her senior debut just a year later. Besides, I enjoyed the moment of wearing the Argentine jersey. I followed them to ask them for an autograph or take a picture. At that time, there wasn't so much passion or fanaticism about following a player to ask her for an autograph, but yes, to take a picture. And I remember I thought, wow, I followed this player to take a picture, and now I'm playing next to her. I thought about those things, and perhaps I wasn't so focused on the game. But anyway, I enjoyed it very much, and it was the first time that I wore the Argentine jersey, and I will never forget it. Beautiful trap by Luciana Amar, sort of thing that she makes look very easy. When I was younger, I wanted to be in the national team. But when I started playing in the national team, my dream was to play in the Olympic Games. I only thought about that. I wanted to play a champion's trophy. I wanted to play a World Cup and win it, but I always wanted to play in the Olympic Games and win a medal. And personally, I think it is something I have achieved. I believe that it is like this for all of us. They will all tell you that the major achievement is the Olympic Games, because that's the way it is for sportsmen and women. As with many celebrated sports stars, Amar plays down her personal achievements. From Rosario, she attributes her status as International Player of the Year to her teammates and to lots of trainers. <laughs> Support for hockey in Argentina is strong, and Luciana is enthusiastic about the future of the sport. I believe that today in international hockey there are very good teams, Australia, Holland, China, Germany that is the Olympic champion, and Argentina, the best teams in the world. And these are the teams that are going to be at the top for several years. And nowadays they show impressive hockey, don't they? Because you watch a game of Australia-Holland or Argentina-China and you see a level, a pace that is impressive. And at 27, Luciana Amar wants to play on to the 2006 World Cup in Madrid and perhaps to another Olympic Games in Beijing in 2008. But I do want to get to the World Cup that is quite close, and my main goal is to get to the World Cup in the best shape I can. And then I will see, I want to play one more Champions if I can, and one more Olympic game would be too much, but we will see. I see Maggie and she wants to get to Beijing, 
So that inspires the older ones to say, well, I go on. Before we go today, a look at the international calendar. And on the list of major events, the BDO Women's Junior World Cup will be played in Santiago in September. The Samsung Women's Champions Trophy is scheduled for Canberra in late November and the Sahara Men's Champions Trophy will be played in Chennai in December. In continental events that serve as World Cup qualifying tournaments, the European Nations Championship for Women will be played in Dublin in August and Leipzig hosts the European Nations Cup for Men later the same month. The Africa Cup tournaments for men and women will be held in Pretoria in October, where South Africa is the defending champion in both the men's and women's competitions. And Singapore hosts Invitation Four Nations events for both men and women in late August. And there is a more social event planned in Cyprus in October. The Exiles Club at the RAF base Akrotiri is staging a seven-a-side tournament on four grass pitches and invites teams from anywhere in the world to take part. For details, go to the World Hockey website or send an email to bdoworldhockey at worldhockey.org. Coming up next month on BDO World Hockey, a full report on the Rabobank Women's Champions Challenge and London's plans for hockey at the 2012 Olympic Games.